So I'm going to measure it on this side. So our starting position, the motion that we're looking for is glenohumeral flexion, okay? So starting position, she's sitting or standing, shoulder is 80 ducted, elbows extended, and forearms in neutral. So tomorrow or next week on the quiz, I could say, what's the starting position for glenohumeral flexion? So that's how much you guys really need to study this in the next week, okay? All right, starting position is here. Our axis, right, so the center point of where that motion is occurring around is one inch below that acromion process. Oh, that's why we had to know and be able to palpate a chromium process because if we're palpating our chromium process back here, one inch below, <coughs> we're going to be off on our measurements, right? So we find that acromion process, that shelf-like projection, and we're about one inch below. So right here is my axis point. So I'm gonna place my goniometer right on that axis point. Once again, it's like you drill a hole through your axis. You don't try to keep it on one inch below the chromium the whole way, which you're gonna do and we'll correct you, but you are one inch in this plane of motion, okay? So we are set up in our starting position, our axis is in the correct position. Now my stationary arm, so the arm that's connected to the protractor is parallel to the spine, okay? So here's my spine, and I'm parallel to the spine. Say if she has bad posture, some people would say that you're perpendicular to the floor, but if she has bad posture, I'm always measuring her from her spine versus perfect posture here, okay? So always look at that spine where you're at. So my axis is an inch below the chromium. My stationary arm is, um, uh, parallel to the spine. Now my movable arm, right, what we talked about in the lecture, which one's our movable arm? Our movable arm is going to stay parallel to the humerus. So I want you to go ahead and raise your arm for me as high as you can. Good. Uh-oh. Everything's changed now, right? So now I go back to where I drill the hold my axis in. I'm not that inch below my acromion process, right? Because my axis doesn't change even though the motion changes, okay? So I still have my axis exactly where it was. My stationary arm is going to stay parallel to that spine. And now my movable arm is going to be parallel to the humerus. And then I'm going to look at my goni and we're going to um, pinch my goniometer so it doesn't move. And I'm going to read 140 degrees of glenohumeral flexion. Okay. Yay, one first range of motion. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it again. So, starting position, I'm going to palpate the acromion. I'm going to go one inch below. I'm going to get my goniometer all set up. Stationary arm is going to be parallel to the spine. Movable arms parallel to that humerus. Perfect. Now go ahead and do the motion. She's got a limitation, so she's going to stop right there, right? Now I look again, get parallel to that spine again that axis where I drilled that hole through, now my movable arm is going to be in um, parallel with that humerus. I'm going to pinch off my goniometer, I'm going to read it. She has 100 degrees of elbow of glenohumeral flexion. Uh-oh, what did I do? I read the wrong side of my goniometer, right? Because I know before even taking this class, if she comes to here, that's less than 90, right? Your 90. So I know that I can't be 100 degrees of glenohumeral flexion here. Oh, so I read the wrong end. She actually had 78 degrees of glenohumeral flexion. Okay. All right, so that's your first one. The norm for that is 0 to 180, right? 0, and if she was normal, 180 degrees of motion. All right, so glenohumeral extension. So with this, if you have them seated, you can see how this becomes an issue, right? So you can either have them stand, get a chair with no back, or just have her kind of hang her arm off to the side here. Good. So this is our, the opposite, glenohumeral extension. So starting position is the same, sitting or standing, make sure the chair is not blocking it. Shoulders 80 ducted, elbows extended, forearms in neutral. Our norm is 0 to 60. Axis is 1 inch below that acromion process. Find my shelf like projection an inch below. So here's my axis. My stationary arms parallel to that spine, not just perpendicular to the floor. Always looking at that spine because if she has a terrible posture, 
<coughs> so we're parallel to the spine with that stationary arm, and our movable arm is parallel with the humerus, in line with that humerus. Okay, so lean to the side right here. Okay, good. So now I am ready to go. Now I want you to go ahead and pull your arm back towards me as far as you can. Good, so things moved around a little bit, so I'm gonna go back to my axis, I know it's there. I am um, parallel with the spine, and my movable arms in line with the humerus. So she has 50 degrees of glenohumeral extension. Close to normal. <laughs> All right, so let's do one more, and then we're gonna break up, since our, it's our first introduction to this fun little goniometer thing. So glenohumeral abduction, right? Norm is zero to 180. That's the motion. Our starting position, sitting or standing, shoulders adducted, elbows extended, and forearm is supinated. Okay? This would be easy if it's a starting position for everything, right? It's not. But um, so here's our starting position. My axis is here's that acromion, and it's that posterior aspect of the acromion. So that means I'm behind my patient. Good, I'm on the posterior part of that acromion. Now, my stationary arm is parallel to the humerus. And it remains here while the arm moves. No, no, no. It's parallel to the spine. There we go. So posterior aspect to the chromium, and my stationary arm is parallel to the spine. So straight up and down here. Unless she's got some scoliosis going on, then it would be down here. So always think the spine, not in relation to the ground, OK? So I'm parallel to the spine, so my goniometer, my stationary arm, and my spine are never going to meet. Parallel, okay? Posterior aspect of the acromion, parallel to the spine, my stationary arm, and then my movable arm is parallel to the humerus, okay? So go ahead, and I want you to raise your arm up all the way like you're doing a jumping jack, just like that. Good, something moved, so I'm going to have to find that axis again. Good, make sure I'm still parallel to the spine, and then my movable arm is in line with that humerus. So 170 degrees of glenohumeral abduction. So let's start again. Now she's going to have an impairment. She's going to have something wrong with her shoulder, right? So she's going to have pain, so she's not going to be able to move that arm all the way. So same starting position, posterior aspect of the chromium. Stationary is parallel to the spine. Now go ahead and move that arm up as high as you can. Good. She's got a lot of impairment, so she's substituting by lateral flexion. Oh, well, you can't do that. So I'm going to correct her. <laughs> All right, is that as far, is that, is that as high as you can bring that up? Okay, so I'm going to measure. So I moved my goniometer, so i got to find all those things again. Posterior aspect of the acromion, not pressing on it. Remember your planes of motion. I'm parallel to the spine, and my movable arm is uh, in line with the humerus, parallel to the humerus. So she has 105 degrees of abduction. No, she does not. I read my goni wrong. She has 74 degrees of glenohumeral abduction. And norm is 0 to 180. All right, let's break up into the groups.